Welcome to the Investor News. In today's video, we're checking out the most discussed topics related to oil and gas, today's current situation, and how it is affecting or will affect the economy. Continuing to do the same action and expecting different results is the Einsteinian definition of insanity. But that hasn't stopped the Biden administration in the case of its attack on his oil and gas prices. This morning, despite those servers being reportedly fried, they managed to report that the U.S. released 6.9 million barrels of crude from its Strategic Petroleum Reserve, SPR, last week. As Bloomberg's Javier Blas notes, the latest weekly release has pushed the SPR below the 500 million barrels mark for the first time since 1986. The plummeting SPR is not having the impact on prices that President Biden hoped, which explains why he is blaming everyone and everything else for the rise in gas prices, as it becomes clear it's a refining capacity issue as much as anything else. As is obvious in between barrel equivalents for products versus crude. After last week's discussions between the White House and energy executives, a number have spoken out to defend against the vitriolic attacks from Biden. However, Scott D. Sheffield, Chief Executive Officer of Pioneer Natural Resources, perhaps said it all best, concluding on the problems that the administration is going to face in dealing with a rapidly emptying SPR very soon. Yeah, first of all, I think we've all seen the true behavior of the Biden administration when they came out, when he first came in office, they basically wanted to ban fracking, no federal leases and they've already shut down gas infrastructure, moving gas across the Northeast down to the Gulf Coast. New York won't take a pipeline, they've rejected several pipelines, they rather use fuel oil instead of natural gas in the state of New York. So that's been amazing to me and the rhetoric coming out of the Secretary of Energy was to find another job in another industry versus the fossil fuel industry. So all of a sudden, things are getting tight, gasoline is going up, we have a war in Ukraine and then the entire administration changes. But the rhetoric really hasn't, you saw the argument between Mike Wirth and Biden. So when I said we're not going to add growth, he quoted me and used my name that some CEO basically said that they wouldn't change your growth rate if oil was $200. So in my opinion, relying on SPR and federal tax removing 18 cents. Those are band-aids. In my opinion, our inventory after six months SPR will be at the lowest in 40 years. So he is going to have to buy at a higher price and refill it in my opinion. And we're going to be even shorter, and SPR will be half of what it was three years ago. Separately, as Biden heads to the Middle East to ask for help with his ratings, Reuters is reporting that of a conversation caught between French President Macron and US President Biden. I had a call with MBZ, Macron was heard telling US President Joe Biden on the sidelines of the G7 summit. He told me two things. I'm at a maximum, maximum, production capacity. This is what he claims. And then he said Saudis can increase by 150, thousands barrels per day. Maybe a little bit more but they don't have huge capacities, Macron said. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. In other words, no matter how much Biden begs, the two top OPEC oil producers, Saudi Arabia and UAE, can barely increase oil production. Investors sold petroleum last week at the fastest rate since just after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as the deteriorating economic outlook trumped fears about the impact of sanctions on oil supplies. Hedge funds and other money managers sold the equivalent of 71 million barrels in the six most important petroleum futures and options contracts in the week to June 21. The rate of selling was the fastest since the week ending March 8, shortly after the invasion, based on position records from ICE Futures Europe and the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Sales over the last two weeks have totaled 82 million barrels, largely reversing purchases of 99 million over the previous four weeks, as traders' focus has shifted from sanctions to the gathering economic downturn. In the most recent week, sales were led by the liquidation of existing bullish long positions rather than the creation of new bearish short ones, and by crude oil rather than refined products. Selling was concentrated in NYMEX and ICE WTI, minus 35 million barrels, and Brent, minus 30 million, with small sales in U.S. diesel, minus 4 million, and U.S. gasoline, minus 3 million, and insignificant purchases of European gas oil, plus 1 million. Existing bullish long positions were cut by 65 million barrels while new bearish shorts were initiated amounting to just 6 million, implying profit-taking among formerly bullish fund managers. 
The net position across all six contracts was cut to just 564 million barrels, which is in only the 41st percentile for all weeks since 2013, down from 647 million barrels, 56th percentile, two weeks ago. The ratio of long to short positions fell to 5.68 to 1, 74th percentile, from 6.68 to 1, 84th percentile, a fortnight earlier. Policymakers from North America and Europe are still exploring ways to step up sanctions on Russia's crude and diesel exports, which is supporting positions and oil prices. But the potential impact is more than offset by signs economies on both sides of the North Atlantic are starting to weaken, which is likely to weaken consumption of both crude and middle distillates. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marcus Dan.